to dance before God and give him praise. Did you hear what I just said? It's the first Sunday of the year and you want to thank him. There's no one who ever appreciates God that depreciates. Did you hear what I said? No one ever appreciates God and depreciates. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to have two sessions. Uh, the first session is for all of us. Then after this session, I'm just going to be meeting with the pastors, ministers, those who are to be ordained, their partners, if you're here, we're pastor, minister, brand pastors, whatever, trustees. I would like you to wait. That will happen between 4.30 to 5.30. And um, after this session, um, the next speaker is around. That man is an old, wise man. He carries some grace. He carries some grace. Pastor Joseph Wade, who carries a lot of grace. Amen. Well, may God protect you Amen. and keep you from every virus. Amen. Some virus going around now. Yeah, I'm trying to shake it off. I'm trying to shake it off. I'm trying to shake those things off. They are flying. Are you with me? I don't know. If I've not been able to talk to you as I should talk to you, please forgive me. It's difficult to be jumping, preaching, having meetings upon meetings and satisfy everybody. Is that okay? Please, uh, 2015 is coming to an end. If I've offended you, please don't take it to 2016. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I release any hurt because I want to make heaven. Is that okay? If anybody says pastor is angry with you, tell you that you lie. I don't have no grudge against anybody. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Psalm 90, please. Will you help me appreciate the people on the technical department? Come on, appreciate them. That man is a very good man. That man is a very good man. And look at his son at the back there. Appreciate him. Please thank him. You know, where is, uh, come, Jonathan, you are going to live long. Come, come, come on, clap for him. I said something to you the other day. What did I say to you again? You said that um, I should keep on taking the microphone when you finished with it. You know what I noticed? I just noticed it. Every time they, I finished, initially I didn't notice it. it would, after the service, he would come, put his hand, I take the microphone from him. And I just go, he keeps doing it. He keeps doing it. So I stopped him about two days ago. I, I hugged him. I said, thank you for what you are doing. Watch this. Let me tell you something. Uh, you contact the anointing. You contact, I, I, I wish I knew some of the things I knew. I knew very early. When these children are working for God, please encourage them. And God will use them to speak to you. Watch this. The prophet said something. The prophet said something today. I don't know whether you picked it up. You guys need to help me with this thing. You know? This won't happen when we move to the new building. And you won't have to be rushing home. People pushing you, going home. It won't happen. Watch this. The, the, the prophet said something. It was while I was in the room, he came back to me. Because we have to learn from ourselves. You know, he said, I don't joke with when God speaks, including children. Let me tell you what happened to me last night. I think it was after the evening session. Somehow I became hungry. And um, my, my son always stays with me, Jeremiah. So I came out of my room. I, I wanted to say, hey, go, go get, where's Grace? Where's uh, Joshua? Let him get me some fruit. So he followed me. He said, Dad, no, don't eat. <laughs> How can this boy say I shouldn't eat? Anyway, so he said, Dad, 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 I saw this, I saw this scene in my dream. And quite often, he always tells me, Dad, I dream, I dream, I dream. The same thing with my daughter. So he said, anyway, I saw exactly what you did now. You 
going out of the door that you wanted to go and eat. And uh, I don't know what he said, but you know, it's almost like if you eat something at this time, it will disturb your system. I was hungry. And it was, it was pursuing me. Dad, don't, don't go and eat now. I saw it. You know what I did? I looked at him. I said, Jeremiah, thank you for telling me. Tell whoever I've sent to cancel it. I'm not eating. Good night. Well, you could say it could have been a coincidence, but let me tell you something. God will often send to you people who are close to you. The problem often is that we have problem with the channel. Sometimes it's somebody you don't like. Sometimes it's your own child. You know what I just said? It's not going to be a big deal for me to go to bed without food. But it might even be, this, this is not from an outsider, it's from my own children. They might give me something that would disturb my system that would be something else. So when God, when your children wake up and say, Mom, I had a dream. I had a dream. Don't joke with it. It might be the last warning before somebody takes you out. Let's appreciate this young man. Thank you. Psalm 90, please. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. I have a word of challenge to us. I have a word of challenge. Psalm 90. Oh, glory to God. Are you there, Psalm 90? This is one of the few Psalms that Moses wrote. A lot of people think that David wrote all the Psalms. No, he didn't. This Psalm was actually written by Moses, the servant of God. It's out of this song that that, out of this Psalm that that song came out. How great thou art. You see it as we go on. Lord, thou hast been a dwelling place. In all generations. Before the mountains we are brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and see it. Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass with great up. In the morning it flourisheth and great up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger. And by thy rot are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy rot. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us. To number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Ephesians, please. Ephesians chapter 5. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Are you there? From verse number 16. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. Or buying back the time. Because the days are evil. Somebody say the days are evil. Ah, wherefore be ye not unwise. Say with me I will not be unwise. Say I will be understanding. What the will of the Lord is. Lord, please speak to us out of your holy word for the entrance of your word gives life. Gives understanding to the simple. As we break the bread of life, we ask that you feed us until we want no more. Let your word come with simplicity and accuracy. Let it come like a guided missile. Let your word bring deliverance. Let it bring inspiration, encouragement, and instruction to your people. 
We pray that the God of heaven will be magnified. Jesus will be glorified. Pray that the devil will be terrified. The people of God will be edified. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to look at somebody, tell him or her, don't waste your life. Uh, what did I say? Ah, what did I say? I wanted to look at one more person, tell that person, don't waste your life. Will you do me a favor? Stand, for, stand on your feet and I want you to look for three people. Tell that person, I really mean it, don't waste your life. Go ahead and tell that person, tell that person, don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. Please be seated. Don't waste your life. Paul says, Paul says, be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. He says, you must not be foolish in the way you live, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Please, I want you to pay attention this evening. The first thing I want to confront you with today, your life is a gift. Write that down. My life is a gift. It doesn't belong to you. Your life is, is loaned to you. How many of you know that what is loaned to you, you must repay back. And what belongs to somebody else, they can collect it at any time. How many of you know that if somebody borrows you something, when you take it home, you begin to warn your children, this thing does not belong to me. Be careful the way you treat it. Is that right? It's different from, you know, this, this, this cooker, yeah, it's not my own home. This trinket, I went to borrow this trinket for, for this special marriage ceremony. You, after this ceremony, I have to return it. So if I see any one of you thought this, in, I will kill you. We are careful to take care of somebody else's property. But how careful are you to, to say to people, my life is not my own? For Paul says, you were bought with a price. In those days, they buy slaves. When they buy a slave, they put hole on their ears to remind them that you don't belong to yourself. You belong to another person. So you don't live your life anyhow. You don't go to places, do things that you just, you know, I'm afraid when somebody just wakes up from nowhere. I say, you know what? I, I, I want to, I want to, I'm traveling somewhere. I'm, I'm go, I want to relocate to Dubai. Hey. What have we been thinking about this Dubai thing? I, it just came to my brain. Ah, are you just going to Dubai like that? Did, did you consult the owner of the life? Please, fill my heart this evening. Don't waste your life. You, you know, watch me. I'm talking from a heart, from a very heavy heart. Because majority of people, their lives are already wasted. It's almost beyond redemption. What is life? What is life? What is life? Life is like money. Write it down. It's like money. 
Does anybody have a currency? Give me quickly. If you have 10 pounds, 20 pounds, thank you very much. Thank you, ma. Watch this. Look up. Life is like this. Ma, please, you're going to forgive me something. Please, don't forgive me. Look up now. Look up. Look up. I've never done this before. Watch this. Many of you felt pain when I did it. You know, Ma, do you know how, do you know, can I be honest with you? Do you know how I feel sharing the money? It's not my, I feel so irresponsible. I thought about this. I thought about this several times before I did it. Why would I take money from somebody and tell? The worst, I'll give her back her money. But if I don't do this, I will not get across to you what I'm about to say. It's, you know what? It's, it is silly of me. Please forgive me. It is silly of me to have done this. But if I don't do, did you did you hear people's remark? Yeah. You know what? You know what? You know you you know you you, you know how you felt. Do you know the truth? Most of us, that's the way our life is. You know what I've just done now? I've just wasted this money. You, let me be honest with you, ma. I feel serious pain that I wasted it. You know why, ma? If I try to sell it again, it's gone. It's gone. You know what? Watch this. Watch this. Please watch it. Because some of your lives are like this. It was meant to be a blessing, to be useful, but it's been destroyed. You know who destroyed it? You. I've not done so much stupid thing. Do you know? Let me be honest with you. The more I think about this thing I did a few minutes ago, the more pain I have. I'm, I'm very serious. It's like, it's like I destroyed one million pounds. Because it, it should never occur to me when the world is suffering that I should ever tear money. It's only an insane person that will tear them. But if I don't do it, you will never get what I'm talking about. Can you imagine your pastor tearing money? If your son, if my daughter ever tears money in the house, for the next seven days, they won't have peace. No, no, I'm, I'm being honest with you. For the next seven days, you're not going to have peace. And I will tell you, you know what? You never come back to me and ask me for money because I saw you wasted it. Watch this. Watch this. That's how most of our lives are. Life is like money. It can be invested right or wrongly. You know what most people do? Your pastor just destroyed something very important that could have changed life. I just destroyed it. Most of us have destroyed our lives. My mother must never see this kind of thing. No, I'm serious. You know, come, let me ask you. How many of you are angry? That How many of you are angry? Be honest. No, be honest. Read this over. No, it's, it's, how many of you? Uh, how, how many of you? I know, you can, I know you can bear with me. How many of you are angry? I'm sure not with me because you know I'm, I'm, I'm giving an example. How many of you are angry that this money is wasted? That's exactly what. That's, that's why I did it. I did this because of this. Some of you are still feeling it. You know, can I say something to you? Let me tell you something. I know some of you still want to come and use it. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. If I tear it more, it doesn't matter what you do. If I shred it, you will not get anything out of it. You, you get in the picture? This money was meant to be a blessing, to be invested right. But one man just wasted it a few minutes ago. Could that be your life? Listen to me. Could that be your life? Listen. I know, I know people are hailing you. Listen. I know people have been hailing you. You are the best thing that ever happened to the world and your family. Is that from your family's side or God's side?
I know my children will probably be looking at me and say, Dad, why did you tell me? You know why? Because recently I've been teaching them about money. How to invest money. But I just wasted the money. The same pain you felt in your heart a few minutes ago is the pain that God feels when you waste your life. God looked at Saul one day. You know what he said? I regret that I chose you. May God not have regrets over you. Amen. Do you know that when God calls all of us, he has an expectation? God has expectation that I will raise up my children well. He has expectation that I will impute into their life. He has an expectation that I should pass you, pastor you in a godly way. But it's a choice I have whether to live right or not. Life is like what? What did I say life is like? It's like currency. It's like money. Number two, what is life like? Life is like time. Somebody say time. Ah, somebody say time. Come on, somebody say time. Life is like time. Life is like time. Did you know that life is just units of time? Seconds, minutes, hours. Do you know that's what makes up your life? Do you know that life is time? Watch this. How many of you like, how many of you here, you've ever entered a black cup? Good question. Second question. How many of you don't like to enter them? Oh, I thought some of you would like. You know why? You know why? It's not because they won't take you to where you are going. The problem is, guess what happened? You have not, they have not even parked before they put on the meter. <laughs> and guess what happened? They put it on. It starts reading maybe four pounds. Before you know, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> And you know what? If you are like me, from the moment you enter into the taxi until you drop, your eyes is on the meter. Your eyes is on the meter. And there are times that the guy is getting close, he's getting close to the, to the traffic line, and it almost seems that he's done it on purpose to make sure he doesn't go past. Sometimes you feel like cursing somebody's mother. Did you notice that? Did you notice that? Either the taxi is moving very fast or stationary, the meter is running. You didn't get something there. Either the taxi is speeding up, speeding up, doing the work of the Lord, getting involved in missionary work, giving, praying, doing things, the meter is running. And also, if it becomes packed, the meter is also running. Tell somebody you are paying a price. Look at somebody say, your life is going. God give us understanding. You know, when we're in worship in a service, you know what I do often? Sometimes you see me sitting down and I'm gazing. When they were laying hands today, I was watching all of you one after the other. And some of you, when you pass, I, 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 I really look at you. I look at you. I really look. And I just shake my head. I won't mention names. It's so obvious. But I look at your hair and I see gray. <laughs> oh, 
they don't, you don't understand what I'm saying. Ah, you don't understand what I'm saying. Ah. You know, there are some sisters here. The way I see you now, 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 is the way I saw my mom before I left the country. So it gives me a picture. Ah, here's my mom, the way my mom looked about 25 years ago. My parents were on FaceTime during Christmas Day with my sister-in-law and my children. They saw them. You know what they said? Tema said, oh, Dad, I don't know grandma has become so old like this. <laughs> you, know, you know my reply? Tema, that's life. That's life. That's life. Sorry. If, if I mention your name now, please forgive me. Is that okay? In mentioning your name, I'm seeing myself. So if I abuse you, I'm abusing myself. So what I'm, if I say anything about you, please also look at my, me. Sir. <laughs> this is a very serious thing. I can laugh with him. You're a great man. But you know what I found out? Eight, eight catches up quickly with us. When I met you, I didn't see no gray hair. Almost half of your hair is gray now. Please understand what I'm saying. I'm not abusing him. I'm talking about reality. You know what? The grace is going to continue. <coughs> Pastor Boy guy is not here now. You know, I look at him again. Watch this. I, I, I want to talk to you so that you can understand. I look at Pastor Boy guy. You know, I meet him every time. Sometimes I look at him. I look at him. Then I remind myself, 20 years is a long time out of a man's life. It's gone quickly like a meter. Sorry, man. You were the one that I saw that you looked like my mom. We were there when we started the church together. Man. Mama James, you were not like this when we started. No, I'm being very honest. I had some of my photographs when we started. I was not like this. You know what? I, I had hair on my head. I had hair. And I used to have my goggle. Pastor, when I was in Camberwell, ma, Camberwell, I walked every week from Camberwell. I walked, I, it's, it's like I'm going there. I walked King's Cross, easy. Easy peasy, no, whatever they call it. I mean, it, Easy peasy, what? Lemon greasy. Are you, are you with me? Easy peasy, lemon greasy. Oh, is this squeezy? <laughs> are you with me? I will, I will walk from Camberwell to King's Cross. One day I took my brother, my third brother. I walked him to King's Cross. When he got to he said, Wally, enter bus <laughs> Because age was already telling on him. He said, Wally, don't come and kill me, Lord. I came on holiday. Please enter bus. Are you following me? Sometimes I want to walk. That was the day. I walked from my office, my office to Stratton Common, two and a half hours. From my office to Stratton Common. Some of you if, you, if you walk like that, just go and apply it. At, just go and, go and deposit yourself in the mortuary. <laughs> Straight away. But watch what? You, you notice now, you want to do it, but your body can't carry you again. The meter has been reading. The people, watch me. The people that we used to call spiritual father. I, 
I, I worked at some of the men of God with the greatest respect I have for most of them. When they broke through, they were 35. They were 35. Their names were all over. I look at some of our generation, 50, 55, and I'm asking, have we truly served God? Look at me. 